Hi guys, it's Steffi from The Novelty Corner and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with another Books Beside My Bed video. Before I talk about the books that I read, since people like hearing about the things that I'm watching, I have finally seen the last episode of Harrow, which aired on Friday night, and my god, that cliffhanger. But I am really pleased to hear that they are actually doing a second season, so I'm very much looking forward to that because I just love the whole drama that has gone into that series and Yon Griffith is amazing in it. So I'm looking forward to that next year, but I have to wait a whole year and honestly, that's just unacceptable. I also got back into watching a couple of episodes of Planet Earth 2 and I just adore it. I mean, the, photog the cinematography is amazing and I just love seeing the animals. And there was one hilarious clip, which I think I shared on my Insta stories about grizzly bears shedding their coats set to music and it was hilarious, or at least I found it hilarious, but I loved it. Okay, now on to books. So this is my reading wrap up for the week of the 6th to the 12th of May. I read four books, a total of 1,266 pages, and my yearly reading total is up to 79 books. The first book that I read this week was Only Human by Sylvain Nouvel. This is the third book in the Themis Files, and as such, I can't really say much about it. It was published this year. I basically read it a couple of days after I bought it. It is published by Penguin. I think the imprint says Michael Joseph, an imprint of Penguin and I gave it five out of five stars. It's not perfect, but I love this book. And I am one of those people who am not ashamed to say that I can give a book five stars, even though there are things with it that I don't agree with. But the book overall and the story overall was something that I really, really loved, as you can tell. Essentially, this book picks up right where the second book left off, which was on a bit of a cliffhanger. This story really focuses on the relationships between the characters. The main character, Rose, has been through every single story and it is about her relationship with the other characters in the story so Vincent Couture as well as people on earth in general and her relationship with the people who created the giant metal hand that she found as a child so her story is really quite interesting and becomes a bit of a moral dilemma for her then you have Vincent's relationship with his daughter, Eva. Their relationship is very, very complex and all of the relationships are incredibly complex. But this story that delves more into the politics and to the moral dilemmas and personal beliefs, moving away a little bit from the action, which I didn't mind. I didn't mind it because it fit the story as a whole. And I think if you looked at it from that perspective, that's why. So if you're looking for more action in this book, you won't get that because there's actually less. But overall, I really enjoyed the story because it's got exactly this the right amount of questioning of things that I find really interesting to sustain my interest. And I did read it while listening to the audiobook again because that's the way that I've really enjoyed reading these stories because it's told through a series of interviews and conversations and journal entries. So yes, if you haven't read The Themis Files, I highly recommend it. Then I read Small Spaces by Sarah Epstein. This is a 2018 Love Us Way release from Walker Books, and this is a young adult thriller. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars, and this was entirely creepy, and I probably shouldn't have read it at night, up and staying up until after 11 o'clock reading it, because honestly, I was not entirely sure I was going to be able to sleep properly that night. Main character Tash experienced a trauma when she was a child. People thought that she made it up. And so she has grown up questioning her mental health and her grip on reality, really. She saw her imaginary friend lure away a young girl called Mallory. And then Mallory was found a few days later and now she doesn't speak. Mallory's family moves away from the town. And when the story kicks off, Mallory's family has moved back. It, it brings everything back up for Tash. And she's really struggling to figure out what is true and what is fiction. And it leaves her questioning whether or not her imaginary friend Sparrow actually existed. I really enjoyed this story and I, I love a good thriller. And this was probably one of the best thrillers I've read in a long while. The one thing that I can say about it that really, really frustrated me, and it's not because it couldn't be true because I fully believe that it could be, but the way Tasha's parents treat her mental health is appalling, particularly her mother. And I don't like saying that because, I mean, we've just had a weekend celebrating Mother's Day here in Australia and I, I don't think that all mothers are like this, but and, and I know that there are mothers who can be, but her mental health is essentially dismissed as a problem and she's treated as a burden. And all that's done is reinforce Tasha's issues. And God, I wanted to slap her psychiatrist. I really did. The thriller element was really good and it kept me on the edge of my seat and I just... I didn't know what to believe because Tash is a bit of an unreliable narrator. I wish some of the adults had acted like actual adults, but this is YA, so it, 
that's hit and miss and worth what you get. There were some really nice friendship elements and also a good look at the impact that mental health can play on friendships. So I do highly recommend this book. I love this cover as well, the black and white and the pink. I just think it's amazing. Then I read The Neighbourhood by Maria Vargas Llosa and this was translated by Edith Grossman in 2018 and it has been released by Faber and Faber. I was sent this unsolicited from Alan and Unwin, so thank you very much to them. And it is a Latin mystery thriller type book. Set in 1990s Lima, this involves two wealthy families who become in this who become involved in this political plot slash betrayal slash I don't really know how to describe it. It was really interestingly written and it follows the story of a very high profile businessman who is blackmailed by a magazine editor and this whole scandal threatens to completely unravel his life and his marriage. However, on the flip side, his wife has just started an affair with her best friend and she, this friend happens to be the wife of her husband's lawyer. And it's just very sort of complex. The magazine editor is then found dead and obviously everything sort of becomes this hodgepodge of, you know, who actually murdered the magazine editor when lots of people had motive. I don't think I said I gave it three out of five stars and I did enjoy it. It was interesting to read a little bit about that time, which I don't really know, uh, 1990s Latin America. So it was interesting. And I think I worked out reasonably early on into the, the main plot, who was responsible for the magazine editor's death, but it was interesting the path that it took to get there. And there's one really fascinating chapter, which I can't decide whether I love it or hate it, where it's called, hang on, I have to find the title. It's called a whirlpool. In the whirlpool chapter, you get everyone's perspectives happening in turn in paragraphs. So you start off with one character for one or two paragraphs and then you get the next character's perspective and they're somewhere completely different. So it's not like they're all in the same scene, they're in different places, but it's a whirlpool of point of views in one chapter. So you're constantly jumping around. And at first it took me a couple of minutes to actually realize that's what that's what was happening and to get it. And I think it was really effective. I still don't know if I like it. So there's some interesting things done in this book and I think it's very smartly written and the translation seemed to be quite good. I don't think anything was lost in the translation. Overall, this is a book that looks at a corrupt system and how people involved in that system can betray one another very easily. An interesting read. Not one I would have picked for myself, but I'm glad that I read it. Finally, I read A List of Cages by Robin Rowe. This is a young adult contemporary book and lots of people know about this book. It follows a uh, a boy who is working as an aide for his high school um, psychologist and he is assigned the task of helping her track down one of the boys that keeps dodging his sessions and he discovers that that boy, Julian, is a boy that used to be a foster child in his house and they were quite close, but he disappeared off the radar and Adam, this boy who works with the psychologist hasn't seen him for ages and he tries to track down Adam and build up this rapport and relationship with him. This was published in 2017 by Hyperion. I gave it four out of five stars. I've seen a lot of people have very extreme reactions to this book. They either love it or hate it. And I'll be perfectly honest, I'm not entirely sure where I sit on this one either because I think it's a very important story and it's incredibly heartbreaking the way that it deals with child abuse and lack of support from people around you. There is fantastic representation of friendship between teens in this book because Julian is, re is quite a bit younger than Adam and yet Adam and his friends take him in and under their wing and they look after him. But there's a really damning indictment of adults in this book where again, a psychologist and teachers and school staff don't pick up on things that would be sending massive red flags. And maybe I, I say that wearing my adult teacher hat because it's something, mandatory reporting is something that is hugely, hugely important and is something that is very uncomfortable for adults involved. But you know, it's something that has to happen and yet no one seemed to think that anything was odd with this child at all. And I find that so strange. You know, I'll I'll step away from my adult perspective because this is written for teens and really, I mean, it's meant to highlight the importance of friendship and looking after friends, but there are some really, really dark things in here. And you have to go into it knowing that uh, there are some very, very dark things happening in this book. 
and I wouldn't necessarily hand this to any teenager because I think there could be quite a few triggering things in it. So overall it was a good book. I'm glad that I read it. Very, very heartbreaking. But yeah, I think be careful going into it. So those are the books that I read this week. Very pleased with that total. So glad that I finally got to read the final book in the Themis Files. So exciting. In the comments below, let me know if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts on them are. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're having a wonderful day and I will catch you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.